Okay, I've done a three, few more 3D resin prints, and you can see on the bottom here there's resin. There's resin kind of just floating off of the uh, mesh there. You can see when I tilt it, it's floating all over the place. Um, so I am going to put all this into my filtration tube and let it settle, and then dump it out and see if I can use my graduated cylinders to drain off the clear um, IPA alcohol. Now I have let this sit in the sun um, a couple of hours just to make sure it's UV cured. This isn't the best pouring vessel, but we'll see what we can do. Most of that spilling was kind of running around the edge of this guy. Not much you can do about pouring out of this guy, I guess. All right, I put the cap on to keep vapors from escaping. You can see that the isopropyl alcohol is, you know, the resin's all in there and you can see it suspended. We're going to give it a day, maybe two days for that to get down to the bottom. Then I'm going to pour off the uh, most resin in my first pour and then I have these two one liter graduated cylinders to let it settle a little more and try to pour off as most of the alcohol as I can when leaving the resin behind. Alright, it's been settling for a day and you can see that the alcohol at the top of the tube looks very clear so I'm going to drain out at least one of these tubes worth and see if I can get most of the resin into one of my graduated cylinders. I'm taking this cap off the top so I don't have a vacuum pressure keeping the uh, liquid from flowing. I am wearing pretty good glasses here to keep any splashes of alcohol out of my eye. Alright, so that's the first one. You can see it's very milky white. I think most of that was in the bottom and then it's the alcohol when it came down kind of mixed it up. So let's try a second one. So this guy here had some air bubbles, but the air bubbles are dissipating, and you can see here that this is much clearer than the first one here. So we got most of the resin out in that first dump of the uh, liquid, and then what's left in here is relatively clear, although it does look like there's some stuff in there. So we're going to set these aside, we're going to cover them up with saran wrap just to keep the alcohol from vaporizing out and we'll let that sit for a day and see where we're at. And I'm just going to drain the rest of this into the original container. So here's a side-by-side -side shot of the first and second shot out of the uh, filtration tube and you can see that I got a lot more particulates in that first dump of the liquid than from the second. Alright, this is just half an hour of settling time and you can see up here, you know, it's still cloudy but down there, I have a good three quarters of an inch of what looks like, you know, just a solidified resin powder. So I've gotten, you know, the majority of the solids into this container here, that first shot. All right, it's been a little more than 24 hours. You can see that this guy here looks very clear, and right there is all of the um, resin powder. Over here, it also looks clear, and there's a little bit of resin powder collected on the bottom there. So I'm going to pour off the top of these graduated cylinders and see if I can get most of this clear alcohol back into my washing basin. All right, I'm going to start with the one with the least amount of resin on the bottom. The idea of the graduated cylinders is that the resin will mostly stay at your left end while I'm pouring off the top and right end here. I just have to watch it, and if I start to see resin flowing along the graduated cylinder, I have to stop the pour before it gets to the end. So right now it's kind of peeling off the bottom, but staying together. And now it started to flow, but it hasn't reached the end yet. So right there, that resin was starting to go out the end. Um, so having the long length of the graduated cylinder really helps with pouring off everything but the silt. So now that I've practiced with that one, this one has a lot more silt on the bottom. Maybe I can get as much alcohol out of it, we'll see.
I'm going to move this this way a little bit so hopefully you can see the silt is kind of going down there. And the silt has made it to about here. And that's where the silt is flowing, right to there. So there's the silt mostly out of the alcohol there. So you know I recovered a whole bunch of that alcohol. You know, we're not quite all the way up, partially because I spilled a little bit of this stuff when I was pouring it initially. So I'm gonna have to top this guy up. Um, but we're recovering quite a bit of that alcohol. Now there is a little bit of cloudiness here, which is from the resin that was on the bottom that I stirred up by pouring more alcohol in. But as you can see, you know, I, I got a lot of this stuff out of the um, wash and cure station. So this guy started right about at the max, so you can see I lost about a finger's worth of my alcohol there, um, which isn't too bad, I just have to top that up as the cost of doing business. And the leftover resin is safe to throw out with your regular trash. I'm pouring it into my trash can here. I have a decent number of paper towels in there, um, and so that alcohol is going to evaporate and leave just the resin gunk behind in the trash. Of course, you don't want to throw any matches in your trash can until it does evaporate. All right, so if you're looking to replicate my setup, you don't, strictly speaking, need the giant PVC filtration two by built. You could get away with four of those um, one liter graduated cylinders in a funnel and this has about 3.5 liters so you could fill you know three and a half of these graduated cylinders completely from this guy. Um, let it settle down and then pour it back in. Um, these guys work really well for getting, you know, after it's settled, getting as much of the alcohol off the top as you can. Um, so I don't know if I were doing it again if I'd build the PVC tube. The advantage of the giant PVC tube um, is that you put all of it in at once, let it set for a day or two, and you get most of the, most of the sediment poured out when you first pour it out. Um, so, you know, I have these two now. I'm not going to buy two more because I also have the PVC tube, but that's another option is just get four of these in the big funnel to fill them up with this guy, um, and you won't need the PVC tube on the wall. Okay, this is my cleaned resin. It's been sitting for a couple days, so all of the particulates have dropped down to the bottom. I'm going to turn on the uh, stirring system here. And you can see a little bit of smoky resin residue has popped up there. Um, but it's definitely a lot cleaner than before I started.